Right now, what if I told you that I read an article about a man who has a 13 year old daughter and that in his efforts to try and get her ready for womanhood, he hired male prostitutes to come and have sex with her. How would you feel? I would be absolutely now, outraged. Now flip that 13 year old daughter for a 13 year old son. Now, how do you feel? That's I'm pretty, still outraged. Disgusted. That, that's Disgusted. pretty. That's pretty much the breakdown of our next topic, right, Boogie? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's fair to to even do it the complete inverse. What if it was a mother and a thirteen year old daughter hmm. who hired a male prostitute? What would the outrage be? And I I, I pray that the outrage would be. The just as yeah. the same uh and ladies and gentlemen if you're not familiar with what we're talking about we're talking about uh rapper slash celebrity slash uh Bum. a whole bunch of other things boosie uh is back in the news for some really damaging dangerous and flat out harmful comments that he's made uh he has a 13 year old son uh, he made it clear that he is hiring an older woman for his 13-year-old to have sex with because he thinks that's the way he, his 13-year-old, should learn about sex. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, to be honest with you, I don't expect Bootsy ever to say anything smart. He has a habit of saying some of the most absolute his foot in his mouth. You got it. ignorant things on the planet, from these comments to comments he's made about homosexuals, comments that he's made about other people. He is not someone that we should put a whole bunch of stock into the things that he says. But I think in our community, it sparked a much larger and necessary conversation, and that is sexual abuse of young black males uh, and i'll be honest with you man when i had this conversation all over my social media platforms the reactions were mixed uh there were quite a few men black men and black women who saw absolutely nothing wrong with this behavior mm. i know where this comes from mm. and that was absolutely heartbreaking uh and there was a lot of black men and black women who were absolutely outraged by these comments. And rightly so, right. Rightly so, absolutely. And I was, I am one of those people who was outraged. Um, but I felt kind of very um, confused by some of the comments that I saw from people, such as the people who wanted to throw Bootsy right in jail immediately. Uh, who wanted Boosie to have his rights of his children removed right away, uh, who called Boosie all different types of names underneath the sun. Uh, my concern is I think there's something traumatically wrong with Boosie. Uh, I won't go as far as saying that I believe he was molested or sexually abused. I won't go that far. I don't want to speak that on anyone's life. But I believe that that type of behavior is trauma induced That's, doesn't spark out of nowhere you it, 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 something happens to people to make them make those type of decisions mm -hmm. and my concern is when it comes to black males and i know i catch a lot of flack for this next piece and i'm gonna say you do when it comes to black males we are not afforded the luxury of that trauma traumatic incidents of being situation. the victim, yeah, you read being about that. the victim brought into the conversation because we're immediately brought and accused of being, you know, deflection, uh, deflectionary. Uh, yep. I'm willing to sacrifice black women and black children because I don't want to hold Boosie accountable, which I never said at all. I believe he should be held accountable. It's just the manner in which we choose to hold him accountable. But I think this is a larger conversation, man. I know a number of black males whose first sexual experience was under the age of 14 and the person that they had sex with, AKA raped by, were older women. And oftentimes data shows that these women are relatives. And 
I'll have, I have, you know, Dr. Tommy Curry has a wonderful book out there called The Man Not. He is a fantastic professor man who spends an incredible amount of time addressing this particular topic. You can find him on every social media platform, man, who have everything that you need because I don't want it to seem like I'm just spitting these things out. I have extensive background in this field. This is something I'm passionate about. But I think we need to be having a larger conversation about how do we hold people accountable at the same time getting them help for this issue. Mm. Crush, go ahead, man. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it was definitely, you know, you know, much, you know, I don't expect anything less from Lil Boosie at this point. You know, but what he talks about, the kind of sexual abuse he, he is referring to is something that, you know, is an undercurrent of, you know, a poverty that can run rampant and span generations. It can become part of a culture. Um, I know, I know that for a fact because you know I've I've seen and heard the stories about, you know, the kind of things my 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 my, my father and mother grew up with in, in Jamaica and Guyana. The kind of things they heard and, and seen. Um, you know, when you're dealing with uh, an economic situation. That uh, that will that, that that has no boundaries on um, certain levels of desperation and, and, and other appetites. Mm. Um, you know, there there aren't any social there. The family structure isn't there to stop, you know, this kind of behavior, and even reinforces it because there's not much else to look forward to. There's not much else to feel good about. Um, I'm not trying to excuse it, but I see I, I saw but I see where I see where it comes from. And it's horrible, and it, and and, it can, and you know the reason why Boosie's so comfortable to even say it out out of his mouth, out of his mouth, to to a media outlet, is because, because somebody's made it because, feel because, because no, it's because it's part of his culture. Exactly, they made it's it a feel part mean. of his culture. It's a part of it, and no, and no one wants to say that shit. You know what I'm saying? But, it has but, to be but, but, but it is. It, it is. It has to be. He, he's so comfortable saying that shit because he's not the only one. No. You know what I'm saying? His son yeah. is the only one. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, 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 that finds this to be normal behavior. Yeah. To, 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 to immediately objectify women to your son at 13. Immediately. And I think the thing that was really troubling to me also is, and I hate to do this type of comparison because I don't think it's necessarily fair, but when T.I. made the comments about going into the doctor's office with his daughter and talking about her losing her virginity and things along those lines, that level of outrage was so incredibly high within our community. And swift. And, think, and swift across the board. Too. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm stating it when it comes to black men, black boys, that type of outrage doesn't exist for us. And I think that has a lot to do with the thought process that people have been conditioned with to automatically view us as sexual, hypersexual, yeah, hyper masculine. There's, there's no, all there's those no, things. There's no way we could be the victim. No, yeah. I know. And, I and, know. And 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 and, 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 there, and there and there are people on both sides of the, argument, both sides of the argument who are fighting for that perception. Yes, who okay? believe that men cannot be raped. Men cannot be raped. Cannot. And 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 if you are, you can take it. Yeah. And, and if it happened, it didn't happen. Exactly. And if it did happen, you can take it. Move on. But what we fail to discuss, though, is the ramifications of this trauma upon this 13-year-old boy. Yeah. If this 13-year-old boy engages in these sexual acts with this older woman, when he gets older of I thought, age... I thought it already happened. Uh, well, let me take it back then. Now that it has happened, what kind of man is he going to become after this every piece of shit and i don't think anybody wants to have the conversation <laughs> because if you look at all the entertainers who have been in domestic violence or sexual violent positions with women all of them have traumatic childhood experiences of sexual abuse from chris brown little wayne 
R. Kelly, all these, and in no way, shape, or form are we somehow trying to excuse these dudes' behavior. I believe they all should be held accountable. Yeah. But if we are going to con- cut the cycle, stop the cycle within our community, we got to have a conversation about the yeah. whole spectrum oh, this, this, from this, start this, to finish of how these people became who they were. This, this, yeah. this, 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 this silent acceptance of the behavior or some kind of or some kind of subconscious assumption that it's going to work itself out or is this a phase or some shit? I'm like, nah, nah. This is this is something that's being passed down, you know. And and, and his studies show, bro, young males who have early interactions with pornography end up finding themselves in positions where they always have a conscious mind to objectify women because that's what that experience because their mind is not fully developed and able to handle that type of thing and i'm not sure if anybody can handle it to that type of degree but particularly a young male they grow up to view women as nothing more than objects of pleasure so Mm -hmm. and particularly and then you go introduce them to Hip hop culture and in certain segments of hip hop culture, the objective further, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell a story, two stories actually. Okay, the first one, um, not too long ago, I think about three so weeks ago, we got a letter from a young man that was writing us because he was in a situation where he didn't understand how to tackle his wife actually, uh trying to get him to engage more sexually or remember that more, yes or to be more uh direct mm-hmm. more forward more engaging mm-hmm. in their intimate life right sure. and i remember when i shared that conversation in our group mm-hmm. or whatever and we had a lot of people myself included there was like something is wrong with this dude that doesn't make any sense I know we called him all sorts of names, like, dude, you tripping? Like, you know, we were just really kind of, sure. I don't want to say lambasting him, but we were giving him the business. Sure. So someone said, hey, why don't you send him back an email and find out exactly what's going on? Like, what's, mm. why, like, why is he acting like this, right? So I took it upon myself. I said, okay. I replied back to him and said, hey, you know, just wanted to know, like, hey, like, what's, what's your deal? Like, I, I, I want to learn more about you in this situation. Why do you feel that you're having these issues? And my biggest fear, which ultimately came through, and it was a mm. long, detailed letter, was he did have a sexual encounter at the age of 12 with an older woman. And he said since that time, he's never really felt comfortable not just talking about sex, but initiating sex. There's something like he gets a chill down his back is what he said. And I tried not, I didn't want to share that I didn't like I said I didn't think it was appropriate to share that letter given the amount of detail that he went into and talked about. Thank but you. at the same time, I thought that it was completely, it was extremely fascinating to see where that childhood trauma ultimately ended up in his relationship with him and his wife. And the question then becomes, and I didn't ask him, but it, it bothered me. I was like, okay, how do you engage in a conversation like that with your spouse? How difficult that must be to say, I was, and I know that there are plenty, and I want to make sure I'm clear, I know that there are plenty of women or young girls that probably have to have the same conversation. But I'm from this standpoint, when I'm reading it, I'm thinking to myself, how do you have that conversation with your spouse that I cannot be as sexually engaging with you as I would want to be or as you would want me to be because of this traumatic past that I have? The second story that I have, I have a young homie. Well, he's not young anymore. We're about the same age. But Hold. Go ahead. <laughs> this nigga. <laughs> but I have a homeboy of mine that when I got married, I invited him to my wedding. And before I even get, to, get into that, when we were younger, I met him when we were in like 10th or 11th grade. Okay. And, you know, as young men growing up, trying to find ourselves, especially as young, uh, our, our sexual selves, I guess you could say, right? Sure we would talk about our interactions or our engagements with other women and so with other young girls and so on. And he would always act really weird. And we used to tease him about it. We'd be like, dude, that like, what type of lame, what type of square are you? We would tease him and make mm. fun of him and all this other stuff. Damn it. And not knowing, okay, given the circumstances, right? And then I get married. 
and I invited him to my wedding and he didn't show up, but maybe a month or so after I invited him to my wedding, we, we ended up meeting up and we started talking. And in the midst of conversation, talking about life and where our lives are going to go and this, that, and the other, I asked him, so when is he going to get married? And the floodgates opened and he just broke down to me, was like, man, I, I just don't know how to deal with women. And the reason why I don't know how to deal with women was because this happened to me when I was in ninth grade, like right before I got to high school, right? Like right when I got to high school, this happened to me. And since then I've never, I, he just didn't know how to interact with women period. And the, once again, the thought of sex or the interaction of sex with another person, just broke him. And it made me feel so bad because this whole time as youth, we're making fun of this man. And I didn't know that he was broken inside and trying to deal with something. We've said it before in our general conversation, the traumatic experiences of young black boys is never, never taken into consideration. It's always a fact of you, you're tough. You're a man. You're already hypersexualized. We know that you wanted it. You're a 12, 13-year-old boy. What 12 or 13-year-old boy doesn't want to have sex with a grown woman? These are the type of things that you hear in these conversations, not knowing that, or I won't even say not knowing, but thinking about the, the, the adverse, the reverse of that, if you were to say that about a 12 or 13-year-old girl, what that would sound like, what type of person that would make you look like saying those things. But we find it acceptable for young men. Uh, I don't know what Boosie's deal is. I think honestly, like Elgin said, is that I believe, and like Phil said already too, that I think that there is some sort of history of traumatic experience there in some capacity. Something had to have happened to make him look, to make him think this way. Because those type of thoughts honestly don't get, they don't sprout out of nothing. It's something that is cultivated and nurtured and watered and built up and it's cyclical, it's generational. I don't, if you ask me how to fix it though, I, I couldn't give you an answer to be very honest with you, so. All right, we're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we're gonna come back with writer, actor, producer, Richard Scott is gonna help us to figure out where the movie and film industry is going from here on given COVID-19. So stick around, we'll be right back. <laughs> 